was uh, all the questions I had, but I'm guessing that some of the audience might have questions. You're very welcome to join in. <laughs> What are you going to, to write after you finish? Oh, after this one, I'm thinking uh, I've got two projects that I'd like to have a go at next. Um, one of them is a YA young adult novel, which is tentatively titled The Girl Hero Saves the World Again, um, which is, there's a book I wrote called Mappa Mundi, uh, about mind control technology, basically. It's nanotechnology that allows people's brains to be programmed by whoever's got control of more or less. Um, in a world in which this has already taken place, I thought there could be an interesting story where people are almost at the level of writing apps and kind of either in a friendly or hostile way, zapping them into each other's heads to do different things. And of course, the, and wh whoever is in charge at that point won't like this too much and they'll be trying to clean it all out and, and to make you live in the nice government regulated role of happy, smiley apps and people, or whatever. I'm not entirely sure how it's going to work, but I wanted to kind of explore that, so I was going to write that book. And then um, another one I wanted to do, I haven't managed to sell it yet, because obviously I'm pitching it wrong, perhaps you'll be able to tell me why. Uh, I want to write a much more adult book about, um, in a far future science fiction universe, uh, set in a world in which the technology has originally come from somewhere else. It's a world that's been colonized by humans or post-humans, and then the technology's been kind of forgotten for what it is and now appears to be magic or nature. And there are separate um, species, basically, of what human beings have become, living in very different ways on this planet. So some of them are almost like creatures of nature, and they have different shapes and forms and expressions of plant and animal, but they're, they're still recognizably human enough to write a story about. And then on the other side, there's much more ordinary looking humans who have control over technologies which they treat as if they're magic and may as well be magic. Um, and there's a clash between those two cultures. And the technology culture is an all ruled by women culture. And then the other ones are kind of a bit more all ruled by hormones and other stuff culture, which is a bit crazier. But it's about the clash between the two. And there's a romance and a love story and some intrigue about wars probably and stuff like that. <laughs> Any more questions? Um, I think you had something that you wanted to ask. <laughs> no, actually not. No. Actually, the first speaking is real in, in, in German. Oh. Fantasy and science fiction that is very rare, I think. Oh, thanks. Well, I just love doing it, so I guess I have to do it. <laughs> Hello? Well, I could ask one of my standard questions. Uh, like, uh, could you say something about your writing process? Uh, process? Yeah. Um, where you get your ideas, how long time you take to write a book, and what you have to do, and a little bit of the writing uh, methods. I don't exactly know where the ideas come from. I know when I sit down to write it, usually I just told you what I wanted to write next. That's about as much as I ever know at the start of a project. And then I know as soon as I start writing it, more things will start to reveal themselves, but I have to actually start to get any further. I can't be sitting there and planning it out and, and doing all that kind of thing. So the first draft is always like a big rush, almost like a race through the unconscious, see what comes up. And I, for me, anything I wrote that's ever any good, I didn't write it consciously. I kind of edit it consciously and fix things with it and, and tinker with it to try and help it make more sense. But I never managed to write anything consciously which was really up to very much. So I don't know where it comes from exactly, but it all comes from the back. Is it Neil Gaiman calls it the boys in the back room or something? Something like that. Some little gnomes or something who work in my head and manufacture it all and then it comes out. 
And then I write the first draft, and that's usually an enormous mess, but it has all the ideas in it. And then I have to read it and sort that out in, in a much more practical way and try and, and figure out how to make it into a workable story. And then I write it again. And then there are some parts of it that I write again and again and again and again and again and again and again, and again, and again until eventually I can't go any further and that's it. Or the editor says, you really have to give it to me now because I'm printing it tomorrow. <laughs> that's it. And that's where it ends. Do you find that you get tired of your books before they're even published because you have to redo it and reread it completely? Mm, not when I'm working on them, but that process de that definitely happens. You know, when you publish one of these, it comes back to you. First, you do the major edits that the editor wants you to change to try and make it a better book, and then you have to do the line edits where you take out all the errors and copying mistakes, and then you have to do the proof edits where they lay it out properly on the pages and you have to look again for them. So by that time, I'm really so sick of the thing. I think if I have to read this one more time, i throw it out the window. But I have to read it because I'm supposed to check for all the misprinted E's and commas and stuff. But at that point, you're not reading it. You're just kind of scanning text for mistakes. So how long does it take from idea to a published book for you, generally? I think if I had nothing else to do with my life, I could probably write one of these in about six months. But considering everything else that's going on, they take a year to a year and a half to do. And then um, there's a bit more on the end for the publishers to, to do their bit. So um, what kind of schedule do you have in your writing? How many hours per uh, week do you? Two hours a day at the moment on the weekdays when um, the kids and everybody else is out of the house. And then they all come back and I have to do other things. Did you do take weekends off? I do take weekends off because they're there all the time then, and it feels unfair to ask other people to take them out and things like that, so I don't. I do write work in the evenings sometimes at weekends, but I try and spend um, as much time as possible just with the family doing things. Yeah, do you need to, to have it completely quiet when you write, or do you listen to music? Or? I, the quiet kind of bothers me. I mean, and maybe it's because it's a suburban quiet and there's always a dog or a cat or a car along or something going off. I find if I put headphones on or listen to music very loudly, that really blocks everything out. And I don't really hear the music either. I mean, I think I, I kind of try and use music to engineer different moods, especially if I have to only have a very short space of time to write. And I know that I've got to write an action scene or a love scene. And I'll, you know, fire up whatever suits. But um, apart from that, it's just, I just use it to wall out everything else. So my question then is, what's the soundtrack of Quantum Gravity? Mm -hmm. It's a big, long soundtrack. I send it to you. Oh, it's got all kinds of stuff in it. Very embarrassing things as well. <laughs> Other people go, what? You don't listen to that rubbish, do you? Um, yes, it's all kinds of It's a big eclectic mixture of all my favorite stuff. Um, do you want me to listen? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, Chicane, do you know them? They right, do dance music and lots of guest star things and tracks like that. And um, Tom Jones, and uh, some jazz um, of different kinds. And then uh, oh, I like film soundtracks. So a lot of the soundtrack to things like Pirates of the Caribbean um, and maybe a few others. What have I got in there? I've got there's a, a little known goth group called Incubus Succubus and Delirium, or another sort of ambient outfit, and various bits of sort of rock stuff like Nickelback. <laughs> That's the one I look very forward to go, no, don't listen to them, they're Canadian, so I like that. Um, and, and other things of that nature. But it's long and strange. I'll send you it one day. <laughs> So lots of dance music in it. Lots what's of dance the Zal's theme song? I did have an answer to this. I don't know what it is now. <laughs> I wasn't expecting this. Oh, no, 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 no. It is the Ace of Spades. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the one? Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Although the Ace of Spades is terribly heavy and hardcore, but yeah, a sort of slightly lighter dancing version of the Ace of Spades.